from the satellite data all the way through to digging a hole in the ground to testing a sample in the in the laboratory and you kind of you've got all of that information and you're kind of putting together into a story it's like a detective our job is to kind of pull all these bits of evidence together Okay, so Peter from Palmerston North asked the question, is it true that all of Tai Happy is on a big landslide? Hmm, yes, that's an interesting one. Um, a large portion of Tai Happy is on a, is on a landslide. Um, it affects maybe 30, 40 homes, so it's not a, not a huge amount. Um, but the landslide is not the kind of landslide that, that suddenly disappears off down a slope. It's a slow-moving landslide that you know, kind of moves almost as, as rapidly as your fingernails grow. And so over time, the, the movement builds to, to kind of magnitudes and amounts that we can measure. But over most of the time, it, it's not moving. It just sits there, they're doing nothing. So the, another, another kind of way of looking at it is that, is there a risk to people? Not really. I mean, we did a whole lot of work on Thai Happy years ago and we came to the, the conclusion that it's unlikely to, to fail rapidly as one big landslide. However, we did think it would continue to move in future kind of really long periods of wet weather or if there was big rainstorm and flooding like the 2004 Manawatu floods um, that would erode the the, the bottom of the landslide and therefore allow the landslide mass to move into the into the stream. So thank you, Peter, for that question. I'm sorry it was a bit long, but it's a complicated landslide. They're a bit overlooked, you know, they don't have the headlines such for earthquakes or tsunamis and things like that. They actually happen quite frequently. A question from Aaron and Napier about what creates landslides. So when we think about what creates landslides, we think about the stresses that are imposed on a slope and we think about the strength of that slope. So as long as the strength is greater than the stresses that are imposed on the slope, then it's going to be stable and it's not going to fail as a landslide. But as soon as we change that balance, that's when you might have a landslide occur. So it's kind of the things that might change that balance is if you have an earthquake, so you increase the stress on that slope or you have a heavy rainfall event and you get lots of water that kind of filters into the slope and it drives up the pore pressure, what we call the pore pressure in the slope, that increases the, um, the stress. But also over time, weathering, um, so that's kind of like this gradual accumulation of damage in the slope can reduce the strength for that slope until at one stage it only needs a very small change in stress, something like on a nice hot summer's day, the heating and cooling of a slope can act as that final, maybe trigger, that results in a landslide happening. So I, I hope that's answered your question. Uh, Liz from Greymouth is wondering what GNET does with landslides. So there's two main things we do with landslides at GNET. The first is to do with landslide responses and the second is to do with landslide monitoring and data collection. Uh, so for a landslide response, the first thing we need to do, um, generally after a big event, like a big earthquake or a storm, we try and get out and uh, the first thing we need to do is determine if there is a public safety risk. The second thing we need to do is get out and collect as much data as we can on the um, landslides because it often it disappears quickly after an event. And that data is used in our landslide research. And the second thing is to do with um, monitoring. So we have monitoring equipment that we can put out on uh, slow moving landslides to determine the rate that they're moving down slope. We also use satellite imagery or aerial photography to see how those landslides are moving through time and also to map landslides after a big event such as a Kaikoura earthquake. So the second part of our monitoring is that we keep track of all the landslides that are reported in the media. So if there's road closures or houses damaged and things like that, that and all, all that data goes into a landslide database. The data that we collect, uh, we can use that for landslide hazard and risk assessments. And then we use those where in, um, in the process of developing forecast tools so that we can predict where and when these landslides might occur and also what the impacts from those might be. Um, hope that answers your question, okay? 
My real favourite part of the job is to create a conceptual model of how we think the ground's going to respond if something happens to it, like an earthquake or a big rainstorm event or a mining or a tunnel gets put in or a dam gets built or a house gets put in. Okay, cool, right. Kate from Wellington asked the question, is it true that there were 100,000 landslides after the Kaikoura earthquake and was this expected for a quake of this size? So the it's a difficult one to answer because it depends how you measure a, a landslide. If we look at individual rocks that fell off the slope, then there were many millions. Um, but from the mapping that we've done using aerial photography and field-based kind of techniques, walking over and things like that, um, then there's 30,000 landslides. And, and those 30,000 landslides represent landslides that are typically greater than 100 square meters. So we've not mapped every single landslide. And so, you know, coming back to the, the question, did it trigger 100,000 landslides? Then um, possibly not, but we, the official line is that it triggered around 30,000 landslides. So hopefully that's answered your question, Kate, and thank you for taking the time to write in. Jane from Queenstown has asked the question, what's, what's the largest landslide in New Zealand? Well, Jane, the largest landslide in New Zealand is the Green Lake landslide. And this is, um, landslide is in uh, Fjordland, southwest Fjordland, um, in the same valley as Lake Monowai. That's where a 9k section of the Hunter Mountains has collapsed. Now, to give you some idea of the size, it's twice the size of Rangi Total Island, twice the size of Kapiti Island in the Wellington region. So it's a big landslide. We think it occurred about 12 to 13,000 years ago. Now, that timing is significant because that's the end of the last glaciation when all the ice um, retreated from the valleys. As when the ice retreated, it, it removed support for the section of the Hunter Mountains. We think the next time the large earthquake occurred, that the, that's what caused the Hunter Mountains to fall down and um, form this large landslide. Um, so, Jean, I hope that answers your question. We've got a question here from Sue in Whanganui. It's asking, where is most susceptible to landslides? So when we think about that question, when I think about the different areas in New Zealand that might be most susceptible to landslides, what we try and want to do is we want to look at where has landsliding occurred in the past, because that's a really good indicator. So if there's lots of um, landslides in that area, then we know that it's going to be more susceptible to landsliding. And then we start to look at different factors that might contribute to why landslides have occurred there. So we look at things like topography, so how steep a slope is. Um, we look at things like geology, so what's the strength, what's, what is the type of rock, what's the strength of that rock, you know, what's the type of fractures and joints that sit in within that rock. And then we also start to look at um, like things like, like soil type, soil strength, how does water infiltrate into the soil? So that's when hydrology, groundwater, that all starts to play a role and what might make a slope more susceptible um, to landsliding or to failure. And then lastly, we can also look at land use. So did the landslide occur on pasture? Um, and did it occur in you know heavily vegetated areas? All those kind of things. And it's all those factors that work together to make a particular hill slope more susceptible um, to landsliding. So I hope that answers your question.